Right. Yeah. I mean, I followed some Google stuff, but He's, I wanted to come here for better clarification. He definitely <laughs> said the right thing right off the bat with decarb. Yeah. Um, everybody, does everybody know what decarbing yeah. is? Um, not, no. Okay. Okay. So basically, when you smoke this, you're turning the THC A to THC. Basically, by smoking, vaping, any of those processes, okay. bong hits, whatever. But in edibles, you've got to do the same thing. So you need to heat your plant material, or I also use hash or shatter. Um, I've decarbed this prior to coming. Um, no, I don't go any higher than 230 degrees okay. for 35 to 45 minutes. Um, for plant material, when you're decarbing hash oil or shatter, Sometimes it can take longer, it can take an hour, sometimes it could take less. Basically, in that process, when you're, you decarb basically on parchment paper in the oven. Okay. And when decarb you... Decarb is just, you're just applying heat to it. Exactly, so that 230 the, degrees okay. for, you know, with this, it could take longer or less okay. than 30 to 45 minutes. You're going to notice the reaction from the bubbles in this completely stop. Okay. And it's just like liquefied hash at that point. Right. Then you know you're good. Um, any, if you start going any further than that point, you start taking the terpenes and flavor yeah. out of it. And I mean, you still kind of want that. I do, even with edibles. Yeah. You don't taste a lot of uh, THC in my products because there's so many other components. But you still get a hint. Um, you want to use bud or really, really clean sugar churn. Pass it around. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. <laughs> So real nice clean stuff, a lot yeah, of trichromes on there. Still got a nice aroma to it. I think I've got some more. All right, here's another example too of what you can use. So that was mostly sugar leaf and bud. This is fan leaf, but there's still no brown. There's mm -hmm. a lot of sugar leaf in that. There's still good material there. So don't throw that away, mm -hmm. but don't generally use that per se for cooking like a recipe. Turn it into an oil or a tincture or something like that mm -hmm. versus taking that material right into one of your baked goods because it's just going to be a little bit more harsh. Mm -hmm. It's not going to taste as good and it's not going to be as strong. Um, so you need twice as much of that as you do of this to get the same strength. Um, so I'm just trying to get this solidified so I can show you the process of just adding some hash to it um, and getting one of my jars here out of it. Um, so clean, you gotta have it clean. How are you? Good to see you. If you don't, it's just gonna taste harsh. Everything's just gonna be bad. Same thing for if you're making hash oil or whatever. I made this myself. I'm using this to get something really clean. And this is dark now, about the color of honey. But when I started, it was as blonde as it could ever be. But when you decarb, it darkens, changes the color. Also, if you leave it in the freezer, um, you'll notice too, even in the freezer, it'll change colors. It'll darken. So you want to use it as, as soon as you decarb it, you want to try and use it as fast as you can. Um, otherwise, it's just going to start diminishing every day, even in the freezer. You need to turn it into something as fast as possible. I made a bunch for my business, about a pound worth, and it's not decarb yet because once you decarb, it starts that process of like just degrading. So it is frozen, but it's not decarb. So anyway, this is taking forever. I had heard that uh, uh, if, you, if, uh, the, um, if you flower vape, the residue from like the packs and the crafting and stuff like that, the residue you have left, you can you can reintroduce that because there's you some, can, some THC left. You or? can use it, but I mean, you're not. It's not enough there. Okay. I mean, it's all, it's less than if you were using the fan leaf that I just showed you. Okay. There's more in that fan leaf than Co composting. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean. There are days when people wish they had it, you know, yeah. when they're like, oh gosh, I have no weed, where am I, you know. Yeah. I remember those days. You remember those days. <laughs> you don't remember those days. I know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs>
But down south uh, and up north, even there were droughts. And there was no earth. Period. So, so are are you saying that um, you should process your entire crop as soon as possible and either into an oil or something else? It depends on how, what you're doing with it. I mean, are you? Do you smoke a lot as well? Not You're, smoking, use, uh, making gummies. I would process it immediately, turn it into hash or some sort of, I don't know if you're using like a tincture. This is a tincture I wanted to show you guys too, talk about a little bit that we made back in November, uh, December 10th um, in Richmond. Um, but yeah, and if you're not going to use whatever, like if you turned it into hash or shatter, um, don't decarb it, you know, just decarb what you're going to use because it will start degrading really fast after you decarb it. Prior to decarb, stick it in the freezer and keep it. You're fine. Okay. Um, and a lot of people tell you not to keep your flour in the freezer. I would agree with that. I keep all my trim and everything in the freezer. This, all this stuff in the bucket I just pulled out to show you guys, but that's normally in the freezer. Um, but I'm not trying to smoke that either. I wouldn't stick any flour long term in the freezer that I want to smoke. It just I don't like what it does. You're reintroducing moisture to it. You're changing its cure, all, all of that throughout, you know, in and out of the freezer, in and out of the freezer. So I stay away from that. But plant material, um, leaf material, that kind of stuff, stick it in the freezer if you're not gonna use it. Um, and again, if you turn it into something like this, you're good to go in the freezer until you decarb. If you decarb, just use it right away. Just it really de like diminishes the quality fast, okay. I, really fast. Um, and I know that through testing from other friends who actually have edible companies. So um, I was taught decarb, use it immediately. This is taking a minute here. So what I'm doing is I'm introducing very simply three grams of hash to this jar of coconut oil here on a double boiler. I just wanted to get it, oops, that might be broken. I just wanted to get it liquefied, which I should have done before I came. So I've got a small bowl underneath. The water is just barely touching this bowl. I've got my thermometer touching the bottom of this glass. Don't want to make a mess with this. This is three grams of hash that I decarved earlier, right here. I'm just gonna stick it in this ice, which is your friend when using hash, because right now it's still liquefied, sort of tacky. So I'm gonna stick it in the core. Try and get it solid so I can just peel it right off and stick it in here. But I wanna keep it in this double boiler which is, right now, you could touch it and it's not going to burn you. I want to keep it in here for about 45 minutes to an hour. Even if it dissolves in that, you still want to let it go. Pull it out, shake it up a little bit. Even though you don't see anything, it looks like it's all one property, I still let it go up to an hour. Um, depending on how hot you can get this double boiler. I think I have the water high enough. I haven't used this hot plate before, so excuse me. But we're talking about this tincture. So this is a grain alcohol tincture, which we did December 10th. You see the bottom of it, right? I put seven grams of hash in here. And you see that it actually separated, even from grain alcohol. But it's that easy to get it mixed back up. The reason I showed you that is because I kind of wanted to tell you, talk to you a little bit about introducing THC to non-fat items like this honey. You need a binding agent. Um, basically, it will dissolve in alcohol like it did in this grain alcohol, but it'll eventually separate back out. Um, constantly keep stirring that with use um, if you're actually making tinctures. You definitely want to make sure it's constantly stirred before you're transferring over to the bottles. You teach people to stir the bottles really well or shake the bottles prior to actually taking a dosage of the tincture. Um, that way it's constantly mixed up and they're not getting a heavy dose of shatter in one shot because it could be pretty strong. 
if you do not do that. I mean, you can get, you know, five, six hundred milligrams at one time, and you're only looking for maybe 50. So shake, shake those up. I don't care who you buy from. Always shake a tincture up. So with this, it's got no fat. You could go with the glycerin. Which is, these are all tools of my trade right here. Um, some flavorings. This is a glycerin. Um, this is another thing that I use almost every single day. Actually, I pretty much do. It's sunflower lecithin. This will help the THC, because there's no fat in this, bind to the honey. So you can't just stick this and shatter in and hope it's just going to mix up. Um, but you also don't want to get this honey as warm as you want to continually keep this. Otherwise you start degrading the honey and the properties that we're looking for out of the honey. Um, so I don't like to let this honey go more than about 140, 150 degrees. Um, after that, it definitely starts uh, sorry, um, degrading the properties. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, so with, I didn't bring any shatter, but I can show you. Takes a tiny little bit. This is an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm gonna kind of warm it up so this stuff will slide right off of it. Um, so that's four ounces of honey. I'm gonna use an eighth of a teaspoon of this lecithin. And normally, I put a full gram of shatter in each one of these jars, which there's 24 doses. This would be a dose as well, so you would dose, you know, properly with, um, to get your 24 doses out of this. But that's also a measure of 25 milligrams. By putting that full gram of shatter in there, I know that I'm getting 600 milligrams because I know what plant material I started with. That's another thing too. Um, knowing how much THC is in your material before you start. Um, so say you start with um, some outdoor, um, or I mean, or indoor, it doesn't really matter, excuse me, just want to guess. Um, I've had my, uh, that actual plant material tested by Seth, they've got a machine that tests like right on the spot. Um, so I know that's 20%, that's the outdoor. I also have an indoor version of the same stuff. And I know with the style of how I'm growing and what I've done with it, there's probably going to be 25 to 27% easily. I haven't had that tested yet, but I already, I already know that. Just because I've grown it enough, flowered it enough, and by testing the outdoor version versus the indoor, I know where my THC level is. Um, but that's, that's key. Um, we were talking about just using plant material, um, knowing how much you used, knowing the rough variable as to like the THC content. Yeah. Did you have any clue of that? No, not a clue. Okay. I used about a gram of it and okay. just rolled on with it. And how much uh, were you using butter? Or yeah, butter. How much I just used one stick of butter. One stick of butter for a gram. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and that was just the general guidelines I did. I needed something to use up because it was mainly sugar leaves and stuff. So right. all of the stuff I was getting off of that. I wanted to use up in something else, and I ended up doing that with it. Gotcha. And it was okay, but it was also like unpredictable. Um, I don't think I blended it enough with the um, batter I was using and everything. That's cute. So too. like I had this variation between the cookies. Some would be way too strong, <laughs> and some would be not much whatsoever. You could eat two or three of them and be fine. That was definitely in the mix, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because your butter didn't change any from cookie to cookie, it's just the amount that was actually in the cookie. Yeah. You're right. I mean, you looked at it the right way, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I go hash and turn everything into hash is because I can get the math down so much easier. Um, I know that with three grams of hash, if I put it in what the material I'm using, if I put three grams in one of those jars, I'm getting 2,400 milligrams out of it. Um, just because I, I know what the starting material was. Um, so now I have an easier way to test, and I don't have to spend a bunch of money to get tests. Before, I, you know, 35 bucks a pop to get you know one piece of something tested. 
I'm not sure what Seth's charging now, but... Ten um, bucks. Ten bucks? Yeah. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's unheard of, like, on the spot unheard of. Um, so, you you know, grind up a gram, bring them in the sample, and then you know exactly what you're serving. You know how much THC you're getting out of it. That much. Um, I think this is warm enough. So, this is that sunflower lesson that I was telling you about. A little goes a long way with this. And if you... If you're not measuring, I mean, a lot of people don't measure when they cook. I measure everything. I mean, I'm a baker, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, as a binding agent, I measure. So that is a quarter of a teaspoon. I wish it was warmer. I'm adding it to the honey. You said an eighth earlier. You meant a quarter? I meant a quarter, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. This stuff, um, it's kind of strange. Uh, you'll notice when it hits water, when you're like cleaning or whatever, it almost doesn't want to, it's almost like waxy, it doesn't want to come off of whatever utensil you're using, and it sort of sticks to your sponge or your, you know, cleaning cloth. Um, but that little bit right there is all I needed for those four ounces of honey. Any more than that, and then at that point, I would add my gram of shatter in there, seal it up. I'm at 120 degrees right now, and I like to keep it between 120 and 140. That'll heat up slowly. All right, this is nice and hard now. Pull it out of the freezer. Cooler. So much easier to work with. Did you see how tacky it was prior to that? Yeah. It's already starting to want to knock. This is too also when a good knife would be helpful, which I did bring. So sometimes back and forth the freezer and right on the ice um, to get that off. This is what I'm using for my honey. Um, there's also um, other like powder lecithins, um, other types of lecithin. Sunflower is the healthiest. Um, I've done all the research on it. There's not any negative uh, effects that I can find in any way. Um, and, oh, thanks. And I didn't tell you also, sort of the reason why I got so heavily into edibles is that I've got Crohn's disease. So. I eat probably 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day. Um, it's either going to be honey or a liquid, or I also do capsules um, that I make. I'll infuse uh, coconut oil and then, painful process, take these droppers one by one by one and fill up capsules. Usually a thousand at a time, and just push through. I've got a couple cancer patients I'm working with. That that's pretty much keeping them alive, but. Also, alcohol is your friend. When you're working with shatter or any THC, you can generally do all your cleaning with alcohol. A lot of people use grain alcohol if they can find it. We can't get it here unless you go to PX or you know somebody that's making it in the backwoods. Um, which, I guess I'm lucky there. Um, but alcohol is your cleaning. Cleaning friend here. So, what is the alcohol in that plant? That is grain alcohol, moonshine, actually. So but it's I don't have access to that. first run, so it's a little higher in alcohol content than after the first, like, say, gallon and a half or so out of it. Um, so, it's as close as to like 190 as I could find um, without finding 190 here in the state. It's weird, in Virginia you have to have a license to get grain alcohol um, through the liquor store, in which I've never actually uh, had that problem before. Unless you're military, you can go to the PX. Um, so you can, make, can you make it with something of a lower alcohol Yeah, so content? what do we use? Get my number. 
<laughs> just get my phone number and I can help you get what you need. I've done tinctures before for health stuff. I don't know about anything, but we did vodka to make, I mean, it's not as potent. Yeah, you're leaving at least a yeah. third of the THC behind in the material. Um, it just, when you get, you need 190, as close to it as you can get, huh? to strip everything out of it. Otherwise, you're just, you're making a, yeah, you're wasting your material and you're making a tincture that's at least a third less potent. We do sell ethanol alcohol here. They do, yeah. Yeah. But um, you might be able to find it less expensive somewhere else because it's expensive. But I just have gotten lucky and I mean, I live in the sticks um, out near Farmville, so there's a few moonshine guys out there. Um, in fact, actually, this came from the Louisa area, so that's kind of strange altogether. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> well, compared to where I am, it's everywhere, and I had a hard time getting it, even out here. Oh, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's around, you just know. People are just more tight-lipped yeah. um, about it. I got a gallon from this couple that um, at the event that we do in Louisa. Um, they wanted to infuse with THC and flavor for them, so in my flavors versus traditional moonshine flavors. Yeah. So a lot of different like tropical things versus you know your apple pie and yeah, all that kind of stuff. So um, just actually infused it yesterday. I know it's strong because it's stronger than this because that hash dissolved prior to me putting any of the fruit or anything in it, and it never separated back. I mean, it's it, like literally dissolved into the the alcohol and it has not separated. So I know this is less strong. Um, thinking maybe like 150 or 140. The other stuff's close to 180, 190 for sure. Um, but not as hard, to, not as easy to get. Um, I knew I was getting the first run. I specifically asked for the first run because of this, and I was making teachers for it. Um, so this honey right now. If you look, it's not really warm. You can still see there's like a darker ring around the top. Mm -hmm. That's where the lecithin still is. That's it's not hot. Um, I should have more water in this. Okay, I'm gonna put this lid back on. So, I mean, you can see it's already starting to melt a little bit. But it is going to take a minute in that. It's not as fast as alcohol at all. Um, and alcohol just wants to naturally dissolve. Uh, I use coconut oil because it's got more fat. And that's how THC basically enters the bloodstreams through the fat cells. So using more fat, I think the edible hits a little harder. And um, just more stable, in my opinion. Just from past. I mean, I've been making what I call backyard brownies since I was, you know, 13, 14. I'm 51 now, so I've been doing it for a minute. Um, and just playing around. You said brownies. <laughs> I mean, she's awesome. Um, so, I've just played around butter enough. Butter burns faster than coconut oil does. It's got a higher, or a lower burning point. So, I feel like you can get more out of it in a recipe. You have less chance of burning things at higher temperatures. Even though I generally don't bake any more than 350 to 375 ever, um, in general, most of my recipes. Um, it's starting to turn color, it's starting to break down a little bit. Pretty quick. Um, get it broken down as fast as possible. So I would keep shaking this until it just completely dissolved. And then you want a time, you know, about 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Oh, after. After you, yes, ma'am, break it down. And I'm right now at 130, like I was trying to get to, 130, 140. Mm -hmm. I'm right there at 130 right now with this double boiler system. That way you're not overheating that shatter again. Mm -hmm. Like you're still keeping under temperatures that you need. When you mix this, when you're baking, you have you add actually even more of a, a burning point. You know what I mean? You're you're adding a higher burning point to to this once you put it into whatever ingredients you're baking with. It's not going to burn right away. You know what I mean? It has all those other ingredients that it's melting with. But I try and keep the temperatures down when it's just 
the straight coconut oil and hash or shatter itself. Um, I was going to do also a plant. Um, so, I'm sorry, let me ask again. You just said 130? Yes, ma'am. But, but at the top of our this conversation, you said 230 max? 230 for the decarb process. Oh, for the decarb. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you're turning the THC? Yep. A or uh, N over to THC by doing that decar process. And then you want to keep the temperatures as low as possible once you've taken that material and decarved it. Temperatures are affecting it. The cold's affecting it, like I was telling you. The heat's affecting it as well constantly. So just use it fast once you decarb. Not like 30 seconds later or, you know, just, you know, within a couple days. Immediately, I like to, same day. Um, so this is starting to break down fully now. You'll also find too with this coconut oil versus this lower alcohol content tincture, um, it will stay basically like once it solidifies again, so you take it out after you've gotten your process, gotten it made, it'll stay solid. Um, once it's solid, it'll stay like combined versus this separation that's going on here. And that's only because this alcohol is lower content than the other moonshine I was working with yesterday. Green alcohol, moonshine, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll say green alcohol, that's legal, right? Um, so this is pretty well. Getting there. A little bit left on the bottom right there still. You can kind of see it. So I've got timers all over my kitchen. I've got multiple thermometers. Um, you break them like that one might be broken just from falling. Um, that less of thin I've used, this jar, uh, probably got about that much in it. It's lasted me an entire year. And I make, bake at least a thousand pieces a month. So, and I use it, I mean, all the honey, all the beverages. So I use it quite often, but it goes a long way. But you'll find too, um, I make simple syrups with fresh fruit for these beverages. So I juice a lot of lemons and a lot of limes. And then you take that um, to the stove and make a simple syrup out of it. Um, so that's how I get away from using any sugars. You cook the simple syrup and it actually um, pulls a lot of the um, sweetness back out of the fruit you know, into your simple syrup. But you don't want to boil, because if you boil the syrup or anything you're trying to put the lecithin in, um, it will not actually mix with it. So there's a fine line in between um, too low of a temperature and a boiling point. So you want to stay below boiling point, or you'll never get the, the lecithin to actually adhere to the liquid. Um, it's really easy if you do any cooking at all. It's a pretty easy process to figure out. Um, if you've taken it to the point of boiling, pull it off and start over. You know, it's not like you have to throw that batch away. Just let the whole thing cool back down, and then bring it up slower. And you'll and stir. You don't have to stir constantly, but stir every now and then, and you'll start to see things combine um, versus want to separate. It's like oil and water; it just wants to separate at a boiling temperature crazy stuff. Um, so what's your recipe for these? For these? What are you using? Are you using I'm using, feature? well, about 20. I start with about 20 lemons and about 30 limes. Make a simple syrup with that. Add hash oil and the lecithin. Get that mixed together. I use all fresh fruit, so I'm using guavas and mangoes and strawberries and blueberries, whatever I can find fresh. I usually buy by the case. Um, Publix is good. Um, I don't like Aldi other than for fruit because you can get it by the case and they're getting things like guava, they're getting things like mangoes that I can't find. So the infusion for those happens when you're um, integrating the simple syrup with the sunflower and also whatever material is? The hash, yep, the hash. Yeah. Yep. Um, and keep it below that boiling point when yes. you're integrating. Yeah, okay. plus you don't really want to boil fruit juice anyway. Yeah, you know. kind of a mess. <laughs> it's just, 
it, yeah, it does some weird um, gelatinous things to some of the pulp if you have any pulp in it. Um, and that was just trial and error, me playing with it. Um, yeah, I could easily make a simple syrup out of uh, sugar, but I don't eat a lot of sugar. I don't eat a lot of sweets. I'm trying to get healthy. And, I'm, and even the products I make, I mean, you've seen these people with edibles that are like this big and like that thick. Oh, this is 100 milligrams. Well, you don't need to put a, you know, yeah. a big brick in your body. You just a one or two bite edible, and you can still get. I mean, if you want 100 milligrams, I can get you there. That's easy. But you know, even at a, a cake, even right? at a two bite cookie. So, and that's another reason why I use the hash oil, um, because I can do the math really easy. I mean, I can do the math with plant material too, but. So you put oil in these, and it, it doesn't separate. Because the lecithin? The, the lecithin, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so okay. the lecithin, keeping it below boiling, um, and um, also you're wanting to keep that hash oil below that, you know, right. like, like I said, 130, 140 degree range. Right. After yes. you've decarb it, it just starts diminishing the quality. Um, so there's all kinds of little things. It took me to learn to not waste, you know, the value of THC that I had in the material that I started with. Yeah. So, um, but trial and error, and I am always available for any kind of questions. I'm, you can ask me anything, nothing's, you know, everything's important. That way you learn, and, you know, you can get what you need affordably. It's, you know, to go buy a lot of products, it's, it's expensive now, and people are charging through the nose, so um, that's why we do these classes. We want to teach everybody how to do their own, you know, from growing to making edibles or you know, also just networking, you know, so you need moonshine, you need moonshine, oh, yeah. you need, you know, I've got sources for honey, local honeys, whatever, you know, that's the only way we can get to do these things healthy and affordably. Um, these guys are a great source of knowledge um, and interconnecting lots of different circles all over the state, um, which we need, otherwise Philip Morris is going to take over and also not just them. All the people in Colorado and Washington and California that are already legal that would never smoke or partake ever, but just threw their money at the industry and now they're billionaires. They're going to come in and take over. So it's going to take all of us kind of sticking together, teaching each other, helping, sharing strains, seeds, all of that knowledge. Yeah, especially the strains, because the strains kind of in a point that I mean, and the strains too around here, you've seen, you've been to Homegrown a bit, I mean, you see the quality of clones, one guy versus another guy, one guy's flower versus another guy's flower, I mean, there's a huge variance there, um, and I mean, I put 31 years in indoor growing this year, way longer than it was ever in industry. I've been smoking since I was 13, and about the time I was 15, realized I wasn't smoking to get high, like everyone else that I was hanging out with. Um, I got to pull away from some of the meds I was on for my stomach. Um, it was actually helping me with, you know, regimenting bathroom trips and things like that. So that's why I do what I do is to help you versus, you know, um, take your money. Uh, I work the med side. I really want to help. Um, and that's where I'm legal in Maine um, and Colorado. Um, I've got a small part of the business still in California, but it's mainly the med side I work. Um, I really don't care about anybody trying to get high. I mean, really could care less. But there are people out there that need help, and no one's educating, no one's helping them. All they want to do is throw pills at them, and you got to stop that. Yeah. you got to stop that. My father has Crohn's. His is a little different than mine. We still haven't, we have all of our body parts, we haven't had any of the major surgeries. But he has 24 different medications a day, 76 or 78 pills, I think it is, total every day of his life. Yeah, my friend does, and she utilizes edibles and uh, smoking for actually eating, because she'll lose so much weight via Crohn's at random points, and then she struggles to get any weight back on, because her diet's so restricted with the Crohn's and everything, so... Um, she actually utilizes it to actually get an appetite again and actually put on some healthy weight. Exactly. Um, I've got two cancer patients right now that are drinking two of these a day. Um, and actually, these are only 25 milligrams, so they're not that strong. Comparative, I don't know how much everyone smokes, but, you know, 
I could drink it with no problem. Um, but they're actually breaking it into four. Uh, you know, two here and then two from the other one. And that person has now gone from 107 up to 123 in two weeks. Um, another cancer patient is using honey. She can't even get this much liquid in, but she can get, you know, a quarter teaspoon of the honey down, you know, just kind of suck on it a little bit. Um, but she's now up. She's gained 12 pounds and 12, 14 pounds in almost a month, which is good. She was down. Um, and then other people are using it for sleep aids. Um, well, I wanted to ask you about that because kind of everybody in my age group, nobody smokes anymore, but they all want to sleep aids. Right. So that's why I've been making gummies. And that seems to work pretty well, but do you have any suggestions or? Liquids are yeah. faster. I yeah. mean, the gummy, even though you don't think it's a lot because it's a smaller, it's still a sugar-based product, um, and it's still food-based, you know what I mean, versus a liquid, just, I mean, liquids sort of just run right through. They process in 30, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, whereas that food's got to digest through the stomach and then into the bloodstream. Um, it's kind of eliminating a whole process altogether, um, which is why people have been going nuts over these and the honey um, and wanting to make their own, wanting to make their own coconut oil. Um, not everybody likes my flavor profiles, so um, I want to be able to have those things. So this is 100% fully dissolved, but I'm still, I want to leave it on that heat. I'm not cooking it, I'm just keeping it warm. I'm basically just completely uh, dissolving every bit of that THC into there slowly. Still under 140, which is good. Um, and once you take it out, it'll solidify again. And then do you put it in the refrigerator? Store it in the fridge. Store it in the, I mean, the fridge is always dark and cold, you know, unless you open it. So I store if, um, my honey on the counter um, just in the dark, you know, somewhere behind, tucked behind something else so the sun's not banging on it. Um, all, everything, like everything I do is it's either frozen or in the dark, um, or all my flour that I have, bulk flour is all in a humidified, like I built a room that I trim and uh, cure and dry everything in, so that humidity is perfect in that room. Now to store, not just to trim and dry, but for storage too, um, and that's where I store the honey, and the uh, not the coconut oil, but the honey, um, and some of the other products, like this doesn't need to be in the freezer, you know. But, yeah, keep it dark, keep it cold if you're not, has it gone through decarb as far as hash. Um, keep all your plant material that you're gonna actually turn into edibles in the fridge or freezer. Um, that will keep it longer. Um, and again, you're not trying to smoke that, so taking it in and out of the freezer, like if it was flour, you know, opening a jar, closing a jar, you're gonna bring humidity, uh, humidity and moisture back to that jar. Um, but the plant material is different, you're not, you know, you're not smoking it. So you're not taking it in and out to pull it out to smoke. You're taking it out to use it, and then whatever you don't use, you put back in. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a different thing. Questions? Anybody? Bueller? I got one. I don't remember what you said. That was at the one in <laughs> um, Was the powder or the liquid, did it matter? I've gotten better results with the liquid. Sometimes the okay. powder, um, well, it'll definitely dissolve, but it kind of wants to rejoin. Like, okay. it almost wants to separate versus the liquid. Um, okay. Just the few times I've used it with honey and coconut oil. Uh, not coconut oil, but um, a simple syrup, sorry. Um, I feel like there's separation. Um, or say this wasn't frozen ever and it was all liquid. It's almost using, uh, failing with powder. Really, it was a fail. <laughs> That's yeah. the way you learn, though. Yeah. <laughs> you fail uh, time, you figure out what not to do. And you don't even want to know how much hash I've thrown away or wasted <laughs> or the almost burn myself and blow myself up trying to make. Um, uh, even after years of making hash, I pushed too much butane through this glass tube one time and wasn't thinking 
And it was sitting on a double boiler outside and in a big giant Pyrex on uh, parchment paper, and a puddle about that deep. And I just wasn't thinking. Brought it inside to Klipu before all the butane purged, like enough that I could put it on the stove. And then a flat top eye caught it on fire because it was still so volatile. And Burned my eyebrows off, burned my, turned my mustache orange, I had no eyelashes, I had a hat on so I didn't lose my hair, and scorched the front of the microwave, melted it all down, and then the whole ceiling was nice and charred. I mean, it didn't burn it, but it was definitely black. And if I didn't have my friend Charlie standing there by the door, probably would have had a fire, but I was like, open the door, open the door, Charlie, and I'm running with the flaming butane after I've already scorched my face, just trying to get it out of the house to not burn anything else. So it could have uh, blown up. It, luckily, it just caught on fire. So, um, very dangerous. I find that story very terrifying because I'm, I, I, I actually, I've only worked with the leak. I, I haven't turned it into it. But see, you'll never, if, if you get do your you hands up. to do that? You'll never ever have to do that. You should never, if you haven't blasted or tried to make any hash oil right now, don't ever try. <laughs> Let somebody make it for you or just buy it outright. Um, no, I have too much. Well, I can help material. you turn it into, I'm going to uh, teach some other people how to do it. Um, I'm teaching them, but I can come or get your material work for you for sure. I can get it turned into hash um, easily. If I can't do it, I don't have the time. I have a friend who setting up a lab currently that came from Colorado that could help too. Okay. But yeah, if you're not doing it, don't even waste your time starting now. Let somebody else do it. Do you have a glass tube in here? Yeah. Glassing tube? Very small one. Yeah. So the one I have will hold about, well, I have a couple uh, that hold about four ounces. This will hold, you know, you might get three quarters in there, maybe two if you crammed it, maybe a half. But you basically grind your material down, uh -huh. um, put a coffee filter over it, double coffee filter, and I don't use this, I just use rubber bands really tight. This end is open, and then you would take a can of butane outside yeah. and stick the can of butane in here, uh -huh. and you're pushing the gas form out of the can, which turns into liquid when it comes out of the can, through the material, stripping all the THC out, and it just comes out, and you want to push it on parchment paper, um, that way you can harvest it all. Otherwise, if you just go straight into a glass Pyrex or something, it's going to be a nightmare trying to get it out. Um, but then from there, you've got to purge the butane back out of it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so you, there's no reason that you would do that. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, you get one of those, one of those pressure things? Oh yeah, I mean, you could actually also to press your own um, and do press rosin. Um, I don't want to my house to know. <laughs> yeah, no. No. Um, you, if you have really nice trikes on your material or if you want to use your flour, you can do a nice press and press some as well. Um, good way to go. Then you're completely solventless. You don't have to do any purging of butane back out of it or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. Definitely do not try and blast it. If you're not doing it now, don't do it with by yourself. Only do it with somebody who's done it a bunch, a bunch, <laughs> yeah. not just a couple times. Because I mean, I had done it for years and still made a mistake. You know what I mean? I got lucky. It was a teaching lesson for sure. I just lost a little facial hair. Um, could have been a lot worse. I had to buy a new microwave. <laughs> do you do you sell that raw material, the hash? Like make it and then just sell it so that other people can. No, <laughs> I don't have. An, I mean, I'm using literally yeah, every bit of my material that. that I have just to keep myself. I, I've come close to having to buy, uh, running out recently. Um, with those, crazy enough, I'm selling about three thousand lollipops back to California. You know, you see all these edibles that are in California packs coming here, all those professionally packed, yeah. falsely labeled stuff. But I'm actually sending edibles back to a dispensary in California. It's two different dispensaries. <laughs> so well, other real. than like blasting or pressing, are there alternatives? 
a way to do it on a larger scale. So yeah, that, you and me set up a lab. <laughs> yeah. With the kitchen right beside it. And, and then is it? No, um, legitimate lab. We well, get to get. But lab. like, is it yeah. is it a CO two extraction at that point, or we could go either way, any way we wanted. Yeah. Any way you want to drive it, it just depends on the amount of money that we want to spend on yeah. the equipment. Right. Okay. I've, I know three people that would kill to come this way right now and get out of Colorado and California, so and do something new. They're East Coasters as well, so they're ready to come back. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of a, make edibles, it's gotten ridiculous. It's almost like cocaine. They're cutting it like cocaine. They're cutting distillate or THC, shatter, anyway, whatever form that they're using, just like cocaine. The same thing to get it into the cartridges and whatnot. It, it's got to have a cutting agent to get into that hardware to be able to burn um, or to vape, unless it's a live resin car or something like that. But it's just a racket. So most of those edibles that are coming from the West Coast, that say five to six hundred milligrams, maybe have a third. They probably have a third of it in. Um, and if anybody tells you they can eat 500 milligrams and still walk around, they're full of crap. I mean, 500 milligrams would put a horse on the ground. I've gotten violently ill, overdosing myself on my own edibles, 200 milligrams. I mean, I was violently ill for almost an hour, throwing up, just hating life, and came out of it completely different, but um, a lot of people wouldn't have had the tolerance I had, luckily, and would have probably ended up in the hospital. But it was not pleasant. Um, so I know, I mean, I smoke 50 to 60 bong a day. There's no way anybody can eat 500 milligrams in one session. Be well, that's a lot of sugar and candy anyway, yeah. right? When you're eating a big bag of gummies. Yeah. Yeah. But people come to me and they're like, oh, 25 milligrams or 50, you know, 50 milligrams are my lollipops. Seth, Seth, those, these guys have them. Um, I can, I could eat five of those. I'm like, I really don't think you can. I'd like to see you stand here and eat five of those lollipops, please. I really would. Or the people that tell me that that, that won't get them high, I usually give them a pop at 50 milligrams and they come back and they usually buy more because they realize that the package I've been eating is not 500 milligrams, just from that one lollipop. Um, what is your recipe for lollipops? Um, I pour batches of 50. Um, there are three grams of hash oil in every batch. Um, and I use corn syrup, sugar, unfortunately. Uh -huh. um, and water and just the hash and that's yeah. it um that stir the heck out of it when you're making candy uh -huh. um to get it all mixed um and there's so much air and bubbles in hard crack candy right yeah. before you pour you really have to work it in there um, otherwise you're getting you can literally see in the candy like pieces of hash if you don't do a good job um thereby everything is not even <coughs> made the milligrams are off so stirring hard candy. You think about making hard candies? I've never thought of it before, that's why I'm asking. You have one of my candies? Mm -hmm. Really? I'm supposed to throw you can it? throw it. Okay. That, was a, that was a girly throw. I, it was overhanded. Yeah. Still throw like a girl. Is that right? Um, I only put the uh, confectioner sugar on there because a lot of people will keep it in their pocket. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, it does not, like, it's hard crack candy. Like, if you hit it on the counter, it will break. Um, but if you keep it in your pocket all yeah, afternoon, too, down. yeah. So that'll help make sure it doesn't stick to the thick. And then you said that was 50 milligrams. 50. Yeah, all candies I do are 50 milligrams, indica, and all the baked goods are 25 milligrams of Tiva. Same thing for the liquids. They're, well, they're 25 milligram indica. Um, I base everything off 25, milli 25 milligram increments. $5 for every 25 milligrams, basically. And that's beating any dispensary price. So, I'm about to go to a meal from or should I take something with like Sativa? Um, cancer? I would go Indica all the way, for sure. For sure. I mean, that's Indica as well. Oh, it is? Yep. Okay. yep. Don and Seth have them here. I can bring them because they have them here. So. Definitely. Um, oh, I'll buy them.
Uh, this is a friend of mine's company. Um, I just love the shirt and I love what it represents. And he's a good, good friend of mine, so I would represent him as much as possible. Another friend of mine um, owns Punch Edibles. They're a chocolate company, chocolate bars. The strongest chocolate bars I've ever seen, but very mathematically done, really professionally made. Um, I represent them too a lot. My logo and everything is coming soon. Trademarking, which is taking forever. Um, it's almost been a year now. Um, so whenever that's done, then Let It Grow is the name of my company. So, soon. All that, once that trademark comes, then the Instagram and all that will come with it. Um, but I'm a huge deadhead, grateful deadhead, and that's kind of the theme, Let It Grow, dead song. The grower. Yeah, that's where it was from. It seems familiar. That is it. So, so how would we get a hold of you? Um, you can write my number down. Okay. You can call me, text me, okay. either way. Right. Um, my name's Trent, by the way. How's Sorry, I should have introduced myself to start this. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's 207 420 1369. And also, if you do shoot me a text, I'll put you on the list, and then Seth sends out our weekly invites on Sunday, and then we're at Ferncliff, um, which is in Louisa, um, on Wednesdays, and coming up on Sundays in the spring as well. And then all three of us are also... Well, and if you got the email for this, then you also get the emails for those. There you go. If yeah. you're on the email here, then you'll get that. And then also we'll be doing Sundays, plus our once a month um, in Richmond, too at uh, Homegrown, the grocery store there, which we all heavily promote. Best grocery store in town, in state, really. But I've seen, I've been to a lot, and they're kind of jerks, most of them. These guys are trying to help people grow, really. Aren't they? They really all are all about the growers. So, you gotta come to check that one out. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hope you learned something. Are you selling any of this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Definitely. Work with it. No, I just right. made. They're here for you to <laughs> just look. No, just look. <laughs> yeah. Um. So these are all 25 milligram.